Now, from Studio A, welcome to the championship edition of WGALA Brain Busters. After months of intense competition, it all comes down to these two teams, Hempfield and Elizabethtown. Now, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the ultimate test of knowledge for high school students. This is the WGALA Brain Busters Championship Round. We are so excited with anticipation as our last match of the season gets underway with Hemfield High School and Elizabethtown Area High School ready to battle it out for the championship title and a chance to win the grand prize of $5,000. We have a lot of excitement and a lot of surprises, but first, let me take a moment to introduce and welcome today's co-host for our cerebral con combat news aides, Jocelyn Howard. Jocelyn, welcome to Brain Busters. Thank you so much, Rich. Yes, we are so excited. An amazing audience behind me here with lots of parents and families and teachers even here. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Very nice. We're so excited for this, and I really had a great time being able to get to know some of these guys this week, and I gotta tell you, they are so impressive. I asked the coaches, have these guys heard these questions before? How do they know all the answers? They're truly impressive. I can't wait to see them battle it out, Rich. Oh, thanks, Jocelyn. Thanks for being here. Now, don't go far, because we'll be heading back to you shortly. There's a lot at stake. We have had one of the toughest seasons this tournament as you will witness beginning now, because here comes today's opening round. We have 10 point questions and one big brain buster brought to you by Turkey Hill. Welcome back to all six of you. Let's get to work now with this 10 point question. In January 2023, Jacinda Ardern announced she is quitting because she no longer has enough in the tank to lead. Jacinda Ardern, Chase. New Zealand. Is the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Good for you for 10 points. It can be a long scaly snake or a long feathery scarf Leo, boa. a boa is the three letter word. The capital of Mexico is Mexico City. What is the capital of the African country of Djibouti? Chase. Djibouti. Djibouti is correct. In plane geometry, a plane is divided into four quadrants by the intersection. Noah. Uh, oh, I'm I sorry. I'm going to complete the question for Hemfield. By the intersection of the y axis and the x axis, at what point do they intersect? Joey. Zero, zero. Zero, zero, or the origin, you are correct. Founded in 1909, it is the nation's oldest civil rights organization opposing racial segregation and discrimination. By what five letter abbreviation, Chase? NAACP. The NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. You are correct, Chase, for another 10 points. You'll hear this national anthem in Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. What is this song composed in 1792 by a French army officer, now the national anthem of France? Oh, we stumped you on La Marseillaise. It's the first cell form when two gamete cells are joined in multi -leum. A zygote? A zygote is the diploid cell. You are correct. The general formula for this geometric figure is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Jenna? A circle. A circle is the shape that it would produce. U2's vertigo begins, lights go down, it's dark. The jungle in your head. What figure of speech is the jungle in your head, Liam? Metaphor. It is indeed a metaphor. And now it's time for the big brain buster brought to you by Turkey Hill for 10 points and a gift certificate for Turkey Hill ice cream for everyone on the team. King Charles III is the sovereign. William, Prince of Wales, is heir to the British throne. Who is next in line? Chase. Prince George. Prince George. He's uh, Kate and William's oldest son. Congratulations, Hemfield. It was founded in 1856. What is the name of the private Catholic university in New Jersey named for a woman who was one of the first American-born saints? Jenna. St. Mary's. No, sorry, that's incorrect. Elizabethtown. Liam. St. Margaret's? Uh, no, sorry, it's Seton Hall named for St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Two numbers have a product of 75, a quotient of three, a difference of 10. Uh, a game. 15 and 5. 15 and 5. And the sum of 20. What are those two numbers? 15 and 5. Jason Belmont capped one of his finest seasons, rolling the second televised 300 of his career, winning the 2022 PBA Tour Finals. Liam. Bowling. Bowling, because PBA is the Professional Bowlers Association. Good for you. It borders eight other states, including Arkansas, Kentucky, Illinois, Tennessee, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. What state is it, Liam? Texas. Uh, no. Oh, sorry, that's incorrect. Any idea, Hemfield? Jenna. 
Missouri. Missouri is correct, oh. yes, for 10 points. This musical instrument has bellows, a keyboard on the right hand, and buttons on the left. Leon. Accordion? It is an accordion. That is the portable instrument we were going for. Apollo gave him ears of a donkey, but the gods chased. Midas. Midas, of course, the gods gave him a golden touch. A jury has been confined for the duration of a trial, and Leon. Sequestered? They are ordered not to read or view anything about the case. They are therefore described as sequestered. Good anticipation. There's one landing on the moon on the back of the Susan B. Anthony dollar, and another in flight on the back of the Sacagawea, Liam. Eagle. An eagle is the bird, yes. After Julius Caesar restored her to the throne, she lived in Rome. Chase. Cleopatra. Cleopatra is the queen of, ooh, and that sound takes us to the end of the round and to our first break. What a fantastic game, going 90 to 80. But we have a lot more challenging questions, and we hope accurate answers coming up with our WGALA Brain Busters Championship round. But of course, later on, we're going to head out to Jocelyn, who's going to take us to meet our students off stage as regular students in their high school. This is WGALA Brain Busters Championship round, and we'll be back in just a moment or two. Hi, I'm Cindy DeLuca, President and General Manager of WGAL. We are so excited and honored to be hosting yet another Championship Brain Busters matchup. Congratulations to our finalists, Hemfield and Elizabethtown, and to all of the other schools that competed during this season. At WGAL, we proudly celebrate academic achievement right here in our local communities, shining a spotlight on the brightest young minds who very soon will be leading us into the future. Thank you to our host, Rich Rosen, and the entire WGAL Brain Busters crew for their great work. And now, best of luck to both teams as you battle for this year's championship title. Hello and welcome back to WGALA Brain Busters Championship Round with, uh, between Hemfield High School and Elizabethtown Area High School. I'm mm -hmm. here with News 8's Jocelyn Howard. We played our opening round, if you're just joining us, 90 to 80, still anybody's game. Jocelyn, this is your first time, time here. Yes. Pretty impressive, Oh, huh? so impressive and so tight already. I'm so excited to yeah. see how this plays out. I don't think we've seen anything what? yet, but that's what Brain Busters <laughs> is all about. It's honoring the coolness of being smart. Mm -hmm. So uh, get, get ready. Once once again, to match your skills against our brilliant student competitors, because it's now time for today's one-on-one -on -one rapid fire, where we pit our individual players against each other. So Jocelyn, will you introduce our first two players, please? All right, well, let's first start here with Joey. Joey, the audience here and then also viewers at home might be thinking that they see double. That's because you have your twin here as well, right? Yep. So you guys, Joey and Davey are twins. Do you guys study together? Um, so if we have the same class, we might study together a little bit or help each other out with homework. Um, but for the most part, we just do our own thing. You know, it's nice to have a twin with you to do everything, but sometimes, you know, it, you get a little annoyed with them and <laughs> <laughs> gotta have some time off. Just like any sibling. Now, my question to you here is that he is in the audience being the alternate today. If you don't know a question and he might know the answer, do you guys have that twin telepathy? Well, um, sorta. It's not, <laughs> it's not, you know, like magic telepathy, but, um, we generally know what the other's thinking um, and get feelings from each other. So it might not be that he's sending yeah. me the answer. It might be sort of that he's like telepathying me his frustration that I don't know the answer. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Hey, well, maybe it'll work today. Maybe it'll help you today. Hopefully. Thanks, Joey. We'll move on here to Gabe. Gabe, we are just so excited to see how you guys will be panning out here. What's your favorite thing maybe about Brain Busters here? What's your favorite type of question? Well, uh, favorite thing about Brain Busters, I really feel, is just being able to interact with my friends Liam and Noah just on the stage here. It's really great fun. He's a phenomenal captain, and Noah comes along supporting us both really well. Favorite type of question I've seen early uh, on was probably math ones. I feel like I have a decent handle on those. And I'm really excited here because I was talking about this with you guys earlier this week. You guys have such a young team, which is the coolest thing to be making it this far. How proud are you that you guys have made it this far? I am, you know, just I, really proud, uh, <laughs> like, to imagine that I'm the oldest, being the only junior on yeah. our entire team composed of just sophomores and freshmen otherwise, and I think that really uh, bodes well for what is to come for E-Town in 
our few, uh, future years. That's a great way to put it. So excited. All right, Rich, let's toss it back to you. Take us on a ride okay, here. Okay, Joey and Gabe, it's time to put you two one on one. He was an American composer and lyricist whose most famous works include Sweeney Todd, A Little Night Music, Follies, Company, Into the Woods. Who was this master of musical theater? Oh, uh, Joey. Rogers. Not he, no, sorry. Gabe, any idea? Gabe. William. No, sorry. <laughs> Stephen Sondheim. Technically, it's a domesticated pig that weighs more than 120 pounds. Metaphorically, it's a greedy, grabby person. Mechanically, it's a large motorcycle, especially a Harley Davidson. What is this three letter word, Gabe? Hog. A hog is the correct answer for 10 points. And finally, the last Quentista won this award in 2022. When you trap a Tiger won in 2021, new kid in 2020. What medal is awarded each year for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children? Joey. The Pulitzer Prize? Not the Pulitzer, no, sorry, Gabe, any idea? Gabe. Newberry. That is correct, good for you for 10 <laughs> points, and that kicks Elizabeth Town in the lead, 90 to 100. Uh, Jocelyn, let's meet our next two players, our two captains. All right, yep, headed over to the captains here. Jenna, you are a senior this year, correct? That's right. So how exciting is it to make it here your senior year? It's really great. I've been doing this since my freshman year, so being able to be here with my teammates is really special for me. And it's a family affair, right? Didn't you say that your brother also has been on Brain Busters in the past? That's right. My brother was very successful in his Brain Busters career, I'd say. How do you feel like you go against him? Um, I think we share some things um, in common. I think I've learned a lot from him. He's been a great role model. Um, so being able to have him to look to is very helpful for me. Awesome. Well, very excited to see how you play out here. We'll move on to here to Liam. Liam, you are our team captain for E-Town here. Also a sophomore, right? Which is amazing. Now, I got to see you in action this week whenever you were uh, playing. We were calling you buzzer happy whenever you were the one that was uh, practicing for you guys in the classroom. And my goodness, I mean, it's remarkable. The things that you and also everybody else here knows. So. I want to know, how do you study? How do you learn all these things? Oh, well, great question. I, uh, I like Wikipedia and like informational podcasts. I really like the Omnibus podcast with Ken Jennings and John Roderick. Um, and I also like make flashcards on various subjects like literary works, plays. And what do you really hone in on? What's your favorite subject? Oof. Um, I don't think there's a particular subject that really stands out to me, but I, I like the humanities. Very good. Awesome. Thanks, Liam. All right, Rich, take it away. Thanks, Jocelyn. All right, you revealed some of Liam's secrets. Jenna and Liam, let's put you two one on one. Twice an NCAA champion, captain of a gold medal winning U.S. Olympic team, 11 times NBA champion. The first black, Liam. Michael Jordan. Not he, no, I'm going to continue for Jenna. The first black head coach of any North American professional sports team. Who is this legend who died in 2022, prompting the NBA to officially retire number eight? Jenna? Kobe Bryant. No, sorry. Bill Russell. And here's your next question. The movement for renaming Columbus Day is clearly growing. Last October, President Biden signed the first Liam. Indigenous Peoples Day. You are correct. Fantastic. That is what 12, uh, so far 12 uh, dozen states have chosen to not celebrate Columbus Day and replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. Good for you. And finally, according to Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8, 2022 at the age of 96 in Scotland at what castle Liam Balmoral castle. Balmoral castle good for you Wikipedia paid off 90 <laughs> to 120 Jocelyn let's meet our last players in today's competition yeah let's hear start with Chase Chase you're a junior correct yes I'm a junior so youngest on the team youngest on the team is exactly what I was about to say do you feel like your team's age here will really help you guys uh yeah we have had a lot more classes between us than if we had been a couple of years younger. So, like, on questions for physics, because both of these nerds are taking physics this year, <laughs> um, we have a big advantage over people who haven't taken that sort of class yet. And what do you feel like is your strength? My strength is probably history. I've been very interested in history and mythology for a very long time, uh, since I went into, I think it was my third grade classroom, and there was this very shiny Greek mythology and history book on the shelf that I didn't let anyone else have. And what would it mean to you if you guys get to bring home the title today? That would be... Pretty awesome. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I got a short walk over here to Noah. Hey, Noah. All right. So I was watching you earlier this week, and you really know how to work the pen. You're good with math, right? 
Yeah, you could say so. You could say so. I will say so. So tell me, do you feel like you have, because you really are good at math here, a little bit of the pressure on you when it comes to the math questions? Not as much here because it's more rapid fire, but mm -hmm. with the league quiz bowl sometimes because we have more time to answer stuff there. Good. And you're also the youngest on the team too, right? Yep. So tell me about that. Do you hold a little bit of weight here? Um, I don't really think about it at all. Like, I mean, Liam and I are very close in age, so I don't... Yeah, I don't really think about it. But. It's very exciting. And you guys definitely all, everybody here, hold your ground. It's so exciting to see. Rich, take it away for our last round here Jocelyn, with questions. thanks a lot. Here we go. Chase and Noah, let's put you two one-on-one. -on -one. This justice's decision to step down after more than 27 years allowed President Biden to appoint Katanji Brown-Jackson. Who retired from the Supreme Court? Oh, we stumped you on Stephen Breyer. Uh, he remains the only player in history to play on three world champion team, champion teams in the World Cup. What Brazilian soccer legend, known by one name, died in 2022? Oh, he's been in the news recently, Pelé. And finally, she was the first black woman to play a major role on a primetime series. What original 60s series featured Nichelle Nichols as the Chase? Star Trek? Star Trek as Lieutenant Noyota Uhuru, and that was Star Trek. Good for you. 100 to 120. That is the end of the one-on-one -on -one rapid fire round. What a great game going. Yep. These these players really know how to play, Jocelyn. And, and thank there's you. a lot at stake. There is a lot at stake, <laughs> and thank you so much for, for uh, helping us out here. Did you know that we here at WGAL8 Brain Busters have $10,000 to give away? It is incredible, and that money can mean so much to these kids. It's a lot of loot. Let's find out how the prizes work out. The team finishing second on WGAL8 Brain Busters receives $3,000, and this year's championship team receives $5,000 in cash. I'm Mike Bromerski, superintendent of the Hemfield School District. Uh, we are so proud of our Hemfield Quiz Bowl team that they made it to the championships. Uh, we know that this is going to be an exciting time for them and for our district, and we can't wait to see the, the great results that they bring forward. Um, good luck to our team. Uh, we're rooting for you. I'm Dr. Karen Nell, the acting superintendent of Elizabethtown Area School District. I want to extend a warm welcome and congratulations to our hometown Bears and their opponents, the Black Knights of Hemfield. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to congratulate these remarkable teams for their outstanding seasons. Central Pennsylvania has many talented Quiz Bowl teams, so reaching the finals of the highly regarded WGAL Brain Busters competition is a tremendous accomplishment. I am so proud of our team and their hard work in preparing for this competition. Elizabethtown has a strong legacy of success in Brain Busters, and this year has been no different. I commend Coach Tim Spiegel for his leadership and dedication to the program and our team of highly talented students. I wish both teams well in this exciting final match. Go Bears! Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Studio A in the WGAL8 Championship Round with Hemfield and Elizabethtown. We have a great game going 100 to 120. It's still anybody's game, but we're going to pick up the pace and play today's 62nd Team Lightning Round where we pit our individual players and teams against each other. This time you can work collaboratively. Now, Jenna, your team is behind at this point, but only by 20 points, but you will have the privilege or perhaps luxury of selecting first among these three quizzes. We have first lines, flowery words, middle initials. Flowery words, first lines, how do we do? Initial A. Do we get A already? No. Middle initials. Middle initials, like John F. Kennedy and Mary J. Blige, each of the following people has a first name, a middle initial, and last name. So for 10 points each, provide all three. First, middle, initial, and last. Oh. Jen and I take your uh, answer as the team's answer. Joey and Chase are ready to help you along. 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. Good luck to all three of you, and here we go. He was president from 2001 to 2009. George W. Bush. Correct. He led the Army of the Confederacy during the Civil War. Robert E. Lee. He's the one. He won the Battle of Vicksburg and the war. Ulysses S. Grant. He's the one. He wrote Up From Slavery and founded the Tuskegee Institute. Pass. Booker T. Washington, she led the woman's suffrage movement in the 19th century. 
Susan B. Anthony. He's, she's the one. He founded the Standard Oil Company of Ohio in 1870. Okay. Okay. John D. Rockefeller. He starred in Pulp Fiction, The Phantom Menace, and Snakes on a Plane. Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. Samuel James Jackson. No, Samuel L. Jackson. He was more famous as Buffalo Bill. Uh, pass. William F. Cody. She was the first U.S. woman to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. Pearl S. Buck, he was the mascot of Mad Magazine from 1954 to 2019. Pass. Alfred E. Newman, he's the average taxpayer, the common man, the man on the street. Pass. John Q. Public, the first captain of the Starship Enterprise in the original Star Trek ser series. Pass. James T. Kirk, he is forever unsuccessfully pursuing the Roadrunner. <laughs> Wiley E. Coyote, only four correct, a lot of stumbling. Liam, Gabe, Noah, is this a break for you? Well, we're going to find out shortly when we have these two remaining quizzes. We have flowery words and first lines. We'll take uh, first lines. First lines. Most fairy tales begin once upon a time. Other books have more memorable first lines. So for 10 points each, identify each of these works from its first line. Liam, I take your answer as the team's answer game, and Noah, I know, are ready to help you along. 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. Good luck to all three of you, and here we go. Scarlett O'Hara was not beautiful, but men seldom realized Gone it. With the wind. Correct. At the village of La Mancha, there lived a gentleman. Don Quixote. That's the one. He was an old man who fished alone in a skiff in the Gulf Stream. The old man in the sea. Correct. He was, it was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Uh, 1984. Correct. Call me Ishmael. Moby Dick. Correct. Marley was dead to begin with. Pass. A Christmas Carol. We are five miles behind the front. Uh, all quiet on the western front. Correct. On the western front. I'm sorry, I need the full uh, word. Every who down in Whoville like Christmas a lot. The Grinch. How the Grinch stole Christmas. Correct. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Oh, tell, tell yeah. cities. Correct. Tom. No answer. Tom. Pass. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Mother died today. Pass. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Kino awakened in the near dark. The Pearl. Correct. It was a pleasure to burn. Fahrenheit 451. Correct. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree, Paradise sin lost. heavenly muse. But correct. On Friday noon, July the 20th, 1714, the finest bridge in Peru broke. Pass. The bridge of San Luis Rey. All children except one grow up, and that was uh, Pinocchio, uh, Peter Pan, I'm sorry. Uh, Ten correct, so 100 points came your way. 140 to 220. Well, we have a lot more game coming up. But while we once again catch our collective breath, let's head over to Jocelyn Howard. She's with some very special guests. That's right, the future Brain Busters, fifth graders from both E-Town and Hempfield as well. Are you guys excited? Yeah! Yes, and how many of you think that you will be the best? Who's gonna get the most answers? Well, we will find out. They will be taking the podium on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Scorekeeping for WGAL8 Brain Busters, presented by Jennings College Consulting, where students discover the right college fit for the future. We'll return after this. Welcome back to the championship edition of WGAL8 Brain Busters. Once again, here's Rich Rosen. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Rich Rosen, and we are witnessing an exciting battle of brains between Hemfield and Elizabethtown. But here's a tradition that we look forward to every year. We're going to pause from the high schoolers and play today's future brain busters. These are fifth graders from each of our respective schools, and we're going to see how well they do with their knowledge and brain power. So Alexander, Ben, David, Tapney, Andrew, and Melina, pick up your signaling buttons and use them frequently, beginning now with this 10-point question. How many years are in a decade? Alexander? Ten. Ten is correct. Who was the first man to walk on the moon? Alexander again? Neil Armstrong. Correct again. How many stars are in our solar system? Ben? One. One is correct. What is the capital of Pennsylvania? Andrew? Harrisburg. Harrisburg's correct. If an animal is carnivorous, what does it eat? Eat. At Tapney. Eat. It eats me, yes. Atlanta is the capital of what state? Andrew? Georgia. Georgia's correct. Ten yards is equal to how many inches? Uh, Tabney. 360. Good for you. And now let's take a breather for a moment and meet these fantastic teams. Jocelyn, how about it? Let's let's meet these Absolutely. great young people. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you guys did amazing, amazing. Are you guys nervous at all? Yes. You don't really? look nervous. You don't sort look of. nervous at all. You don't look nervous. So tell me, what are your favorite subjects? Um, I like math and science. Yeah. 
math, probably. I also like current events. Oh, very good. I love computer science. Love computer science. Very tech savvy, very mathematical here. Guys, you guys answered questions super quickly. Did you feel like, were you under pressure at all or were you ready to roll? No, I'm ready to roll. Ray's ready to roll. Okay, and last thing before we move on here, I want to know everybody's favorite animal and why. Um, uh, a killer whale, because it's like an ape, it's the apex predator in the ocean. All right, going big. Great white shark. All right, why is that? Uh, I like sharks. I think they're interesting. <laughs> Perfect reason. Favorite animal? A bug. Oh my gosh, and why? Uh, because why not? Because. <laughs> That's the best answer we could have had here. All right, we're moving on over here. All right, guys, you killed it. You did amazing. You guys nervous at all? Yes. Yes, yes. oh my gosh, it doesn't show at all. Okay, guys, so do you think that four years from now, you guys will still be standing here as future actual brain busters? I don't know, maybe. I think you guys might. What do you think? Maybe. I maybe? Think so. I don't know. No. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do outside of school? Uh, I like doing gymnastics and I like architecture. Oh wow, very good. Um, I like to do bowling. Wow. I like to dance. Oh my gosh, guys, you sound so talented. This is so exciting. You're doing an amazing job. You guys are doing an amazing job. Rich, let's pass it back to you. I want to hear some more answers from these guys. What a well-rounded group of young people. They're all so bright. Pick up those signaling buttons. Use them frequently, beginning now with this 10-point question as we begin, be, be, uh, continue with 30 to 40. Who is our current vice president? Alexander. Kamala Harris. She's the one. If you received 45 out of 50 on a history test, what percent is that? Uh, Alexander. 90%. How much? 90%. 90%. You're correct again. What Broadway musical and movie takes place in Vienna, Austria, and tells the story of the Von Tropp family? Von, Alexander. The Von Tropp Garden? No, sorry, but good guess. Any idea, Elizabeth Town? Oh, we stumped you on the sound of music. What is the name of the U.S. president's airplane? Alexander. Air Force One. Correct. In what century are we living? Alexander. Uh, the 25th century. The 21st century is correct. How many singers are in a quartet? Andrew. Four. Four, yes. In what city will you find the Eiffel Tower? Dave? Paris. Paris is correct. There are three branches of government in the United States. What branch of the government, Ben? Legislative, executive, and judicial. Well, we're not going to accept that because you anticipated incorrectly, so I'm going to complete the question for Elizabethtown. What branch of government is the president? Andrew. Legislative? No, sorry, it's executive. Sorry, Ben, I loved your answer, but we couldn't accept it. Which medal is awarded to first place finishers? Gold. Alexander. Gold. The gold medal in the modern Olympic Games. There are 60 seconds in a minute. How many seconds in three minutes? David. 180. 180 is correct. Who is the current governor of Pennsylvania? Josh Shapiro. He's the one, Alexander. Where in the United States can you visit Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, and Times Square? Andrew. Pittsburgh. Not Pittsburgh, no. Alexander. New York City. New York City is the correct answer. Which war was fought in the United States from 1861 to 1865? Alexander. Uh, Gettysburg. Oh, yeah. Not the Gettysburg, no, sorry. Any idea, Elizabethtown? Oh, he was close, though. It's the Civil War is the correct answer. Established in 1940. Ooh, we were going to go for the United Nations. Well, that sound takes us to the end of the round and to the end of this special game, 110 to 50. But everyone is a winner. Thanks for being with us, our future Brain Busters. Remember, academics and being an academic is cool, but academic excellence is even cooler. Jocelyn, weren't they just amazing? Oh my gosh, I, they're beating me on most of these questions. But before we send them <laughs> off, we have a great swag bag from yeah. WGAL to present to them. Yes. So we're really excited. But maybe we are going to see them in four years, as you said. I totally anticipate we will. So that would be in 2027. Can you believe <laughs> Oh wow, gosh. it's amazing. You know, it's truly a pleasure to work with students of yeah. all ages and putting them into the spotlight. But Jocelyn, you met our high schoolers out of the spotlight yes. on their own turf. Yes, and it was a lot of fun. So I had a really great job being able to see them in the classroom. And I got to tell you, we see their brains here. We don't always see as much of the personality that I got to see in the classroom. Had a lot of fun. They're going to have some laughs with this one. Take a look. Here we go, toss up number one. This I knew my players and uh, I know how talented they are and how well they work together as a team. Um, so I, I certainly knew we would do well. 
This year, the Elizabethtown team is filled solely with Brain Buster rookies. I don't know if they were a little deer in the headlights at first, you got all those you know, studio lights and stuff, but um, I think they've really settled in. Though they've enjoyed their success on the show, they like their time together <laughs> even more. I think it's fun to do, hang out with my friends while we do it. Each player has their strong suit. The STEM stuff. The humanities is kind of where I, I, I lurk. And what do you think is your team's biggest strength? Liam is a pretty good strength, but... Sophomore Liam Burke is pretty buzzer happy. Mosca, Susicle, Little Women. And typically, he's... Correct. It was 36. That's correct. Thank, Thank you. you. You can credit his success to countless hours of studying, but who knows? You have been blessed. Maybe it's because of the team's golden spoon. It grants IQ and take away IQ. It can also bring blessing and prosperity. But will it work against Hempfield? Praise the golden spoon. Each team is dramatically e different. E-Town is a team of young first-timers, whereas Hempfield's team is made up of brainbuster veterans. Age is just a number, so. We're expecting a, a challenge, a real bloody fight. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll give it our all. Uh, North Korea. Hempfield's youngest member is junior Chase Barrick. He says the team's age and experience will be helpful. We've I mean, taken more classes. There's questions that I would only know because I've already taken biology or I've already taken math analysis. In 2014, this and the team has chemistry. Two in particular seem to be on the same wavelength. We're so similar, and we do a lot of the same things together. Um, we even finish finish each other's sentences. <laughs> Twins Joey and Davey Striggle have been competing in the trivia world together for 10 points. What English speaking island nation for years? There's no magical like twin telepathy that's seen like a lot that we can say on air. New question. But they can say on air the team has a secret weapon, their mascot, Pip, the cinder block. Uh, it just gives all the answers into our heads. Their trust in Pip puts them at ease. Instead of being, oh, am I going to get this question right? It's, I'm going to get this question right because the magical cinder block is going to tell me the answers. I didn't even know how much they'd attached to the cinder block since it started out in my class, but apparently they have fallen in love with Pip the cinder block. Magical mascot or not, Hempfield comes with a track record. Chinese Yuan. Yes, good pull. In Brain Buster history, Hempfield has been to the finals three times and walked away with a big check twice. I'm sorry? But coach John Frick says he's never had a team quite like this one. They almost move as a unit when they're playing and when they're just working together and also don't get bothered by things. They're just so laid back. Both of these teams are ready to fight for the title, but the journey to this point is truly what they're thankful for. We've gotten this far already and no matter how it goes, it's going to be a great experience. Whether we win or lose, you know, we've done a lot and I think we should all be proud of that. A lot of fun. Now we got some special guests. Davey, who do we have here? This is Pip the Cinderblock. And Pip the Cinderblock doesn't only bring you brains, it sounds like a good workout too. Yep. <laughs> so tell me, did you guys have any ritual with Pip the Cinderblock this morning? Um, not really. Um, <laughs> It usually stays in Mr. Frick's classroom, uh, so he carried it in in a box, um, and he just stuck it in the studio till now. Now there is a story actually behind Pip the Cinderblock. Can you tell us it? So, um, Mr. Frick's fourth period, uh, ninth grade class, reads Great Expectations yeah. as part of their curriculum, and uh, so his fourth period class had an uh, inside joke about Pip the Cinderblock. And then when we saw it there, we questioned it, and we decided, hey. Pip the cinder block is pretty cool, so yeah. And Dave, you can put it down. You can get a break there. <laughs> now, John, tell me. I mean, were you probably surprised when they took such a liking to this cinder block? I, I did, and but they really—it's part of a team now. It's, I mean, it's, it's our team. fifth member. It's of our fifth Beatle. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Well, John, just real quick, sure. you have really great time here because you have so many years here with Brainbusters, right? How many years have you been here? Fall of 2001, I think I got an email from an individual named Rich Rosen. Would you like to try this no WGL Rich game Rosen. show? And, Who's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and here we are over two decades later still enjoying ourselves with a whole new generation of students. Yes, it's amazing. And you have brought the check home before, right? Yes, uh, twice we did back-to-back -back championships, and that was a lot of fun. And still have them on the wall at school to try to get new generations to say, hey, that's, that's like a fun thing for us to do. And how would it feel to bring that back with you today? Excellent. More for them than anything, just seeing them work together is such a a great team. I'd love to see them see them win. Awesome. Great. Thank you. We'll move over here to E-Town. All right. It's going to be a long battle, right? And what we need to get through it. 
Might be a blessing from the magic spoon. <laughs> this is Sienna. <laughs> Sienna is always in charge of the magic, magic spoon, right? Well, actually, no. One of my, oh. It was actually lent to the team by a very nice person named Maggie Lehman. And she is the official keeper of the spoon from way old times in the chess team. It was originally a chess team kind of thing that we did that we hit a giant blue hamster. It was, it's a fake hamster. <laughs> Gotta preface, head, it's a fake hamster. <laughs> on the head with the spoon, as we, uh, its name was Old Abram, and then we dance around it and sing. Very good. good. Oh my gosh. Now, did you bless everybody on the way here today? I have today? already blessed Do you everybody. feel like it is working so far? Of course. Of course, of course. Now, one thing I really want to talk about here is just how much, when I walked in the room to see your class, so much personality. There is so much personality in this group. So how are they compared to maybe some other teams that you have been coaching? Every team I've had has a different personality. Uh, it's just, I think the combination of kids that I have right now, just it, it's so fun because they are so young and I know I'm going to have a lot of fun with them for the next three, four years. Very good. Now, Ethan, how proud are you of your teammates today? I'm very proud of Liam. He's really, I'd say he's a little overpowered, honestly. I think he needs a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, great. All of you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for bringing the magic spoon. That was my big request for the day. <laughs> thanks, guys. Back to you, Rich. Thanks, Jocelyn. Thanks for introducing everybody, and thanks for taking us backstage to meet our students in their offstage lives. We're going to return to the big stage here at WGAL Studio A for the championship round of WGALA Brain Busters in just a moment. But first, it's important to acknowledge and thank each and every player for participating and making this show a success. Let's take a moment to meet the other teams that competed at Studio A at WGAL this season. WGAL 8 salutes all of the high school teams that took place in this year's tournament. edition of WGALA Brain Busters will continue after these messages. Welcome back to the championship edition of WGALA Brain Busters. Once again, here's Rich Rosen. Hello everybody, welcome back. We are rapidly approaching the final exciting moments of this electrifying contest between Hemfield and Elizabethtown. If you're just joining us or just for a quick review, as you can see, Elizabethtown does have a strong lead, but we still have a lot of game left. So as we hurdle toward the finish line, it's now time for the always anticipated and often pivotal round we call the Bonus Brain Buster. Now our teams will wager zero to 25 points based on their knowledge of distinguished women. So we'll have the bonus brain buster in just a moment, but first let's turn our attention once again to Jocelyn Howard, who's with our esteemed scorekeeper, Dr. Peggy Jennings. Yes, Peggy, it is so good to have you here, and this obviously is not your first time here. No, I've been doing scorekeeping for seven years, but I've been involved with the Brain Busters family since its very first episode. First as a coach at Susquehanna High School and then as a coach at Carlisle High School. And you do an amazing yeah, job. Now you. for a living, you actually help kids as well with academics. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, sure. I work with um, students and families who are looking to um, have some help with the college admissions process. And I certainly want to um, salute these wonderful young people. They are so successful and they have everything they need right now. They're hard workers and they um, have um, you know, a strong work ethic and they are curious and they will be very successful both in life and in college, no matter what. Absolutely, thank you so much, Peggy, for all you do as a scorekeeper. We really appreciate it. Thanks, all right, Rich, Jocelyn. back to you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Dr. Jennings is very experienced in helping students reach their academic goals and her expertise make her an invaluable asset to our team. Okay, we are on the brink of the final moments of our championship. Everything is now at a fever pitch. Our teams wagered zero to 25 points based on their knowledge of distinguished women. It's now time for today's bonus brain buster. 
For today's question, let's welcome the fantastic Tamron Hall to Brain Busters. Thanks, Rich. Tam now here's your championship bonus Brain Buster. She rose to power and fame as an analyst of world affairs and national security under President Clinton. She represented America at the UN and was the first woman to serve as Secretary of State. She died in early 2022 at the age of 84, who was this trailblazing woman. Again, she rose to power and fame as an analyst of world affairs and national security. Under President Clinton, she represented America at the UN and was the first woman to serve as Secretary of State. She died in early 2022 at the age of 84. Who was this trailblazing woman? Good luck with your answer. Now back to Studio A, Rich. Thank you, Tamron. Good luck, teams. We'll give you about five seconds. Okay, Jenna, are you all set? Sure, okay, one, you ready to show us? Okay, we weren't sure. Rice, no, I'm sorry, it was not Condoleezza Rice. So we're gonna have to deduct 20 points from your score. Liam, you were really eager to write your answer down and you did write the correct answer. Madeline Albright, but look at that. No uh, points are gonna be added to your score. So we have 120 to 220. Now don't go wandering off. We have our last round to play. The final frenzy coming up. Who will walk away with Brain Busters Gold? Will it be Hemfield or Elizabethtown? Don't go away because more Brain Busters is coming up right after this. The championship edition of WGAL8 Brain Busters will continue after these messages. Watch all this season's episodes of WGAL8 Brain Busters anytime on WGAL.com. Our online home also includes our tournament schedule and a chance to learn more about the show and host Rich Rosen. Go to WGAL.com and click on Brain Busters. Well, hi, everyone. After an extraordinary tournament this season, it all comes down to these two teams. Who will walk away with the coveted 2023 Brain Busters Championship? Will it be Elizabethtown or Hemfield? Well, all the marbles are coming up right now because here comes today's final frenzy. This time we have 20 point questions. Pick up those signaling buttons. You never know what happens during this round and let's see what happens for the first 20 point question. In November 2022, his ultra nationalist and religious partners won a solid majority in Israel's Knesset. Who is Jace? Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to... I'm sorry. Uh, who is this newly elected Prime Minister, Elizabethtown? Oh, we stumped you on Benjamin Netanyahu. Originally known as the Alleghenies, in 1880, they allegedly took a player, Liam. Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates. They, they took a player without any compensation, and that's how the Major League got, uh, got its name. In his inaugural address, he said, if you have not chosen me by secret ballot, neither have I gained office by any secret promises. Who was this unelected 20th century president, Liam? Mm, no, Ooh, sorry. sorry. Uh, Jenna. Sorry, no, Gerald R. Ford. In the Japanese game of Go, this word is simply check in the game of chess. What warning became the name of a video company, Liam? Co? <laughs> no, sorry. As a video game company creator of Pac-Man. Chase. Sega? No, it's Atari. The name Atari means warning. In 1741, this Danish explorer sighted and landed on the southern coast of Alaska. An island, a glacier, a sea, and a strait. Liam. Bering. Bering. They've all been named in his honor. It can refer to either an electron tube with a cathode and an anode, or to a two-terminal semiconductor uses a rectifier. Janet. A battery. Oh, no, sorry. What is this electrical device? Noah. Capacitor? No, uh, very close. It's a diode. It's also called the law of refraction, and it says that the angle of incidence is equal. Law. That is correct, yes. Apollo 11 flew to the moon in 1969, and Neil Armstrong took the first giant leap for mankind. Buzz Aldrin was the second man on the moon. Who remained? Jace. Michael Collins. Michael Collins remained, yes. A lawyer files these legal documents before arguing a case in court. The name sounds short, but they often go on for pages. Liam. Tort. No, sorry. Uh, what is, um, what are they called? Jenna. 
They are called brief, uh, a brief, yes. Once part of the African continent, it split off 165 million years ago. Chase. India? Not India, no. As a result, 80%. Liam. Madagascar? Madagascar is the correct answer. In mathematics, it's the set of all points whose coordinates satisfy a single equation. In genetic, genetics, it's the position a gene occupies on a chromosome. More generally, Liam. The locus? The locus is correct, yes. And that sound takes us to the end of the round and to the end of the game. Congratulations, Elizabethtown. They are the 2023 Brain Busters champions. You have reached a status um, through a very, very tough competition, and we congratulate you. You are going to walk away with $5,000. But come on, no fear. Hemfield, you should be proud of yourselves. You are walking away with $3,000. What a fantastic tournament. We thank you all. We thank Mr. Frick. We thank Mr. Spiegel. But don't go away. We're going to have some final words in just a moment. That was one distinguished display of battling brain power. Congratulations, Elizabethtown. They're walking away with $5,000. That's a good takeaway. But don't worry. Our non-winners, Hemfield, you're walking away with $3,000. That's not a bad uh, treasure trove to walk away with. We've had a wonderful time. Jocelyn, yes. thanks for being here. Absolutely, and I would love to start here real quick with Tim. Tim, you have to be so excited as a coach. And how does it feel to have such a young team making this accomplishment? It feels so great just because it's, it's such a commentary on our district, our, our parents, our students, that they've done so well at such a, at such a young age. And watch out because they'll be back next year. Awesome. Rich, it's been a pleasure. It's Thank been amazing. You. Oh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We'll look for you next year. Uh, before we go, there's many thanks in order. First, I want to thank, of course, our wonderful participants, our future brain busters. Uh, Jocelyn Howard, thank you so much for being here. Our special guest, of course, Tamron Hall from NBC. I want to thank all the production wizards here at NBC uh, uh, Studio A. That's including, but not limited to, Nate Maurer, Claire Chickie, Jackie, Angela, Mark Krebs, there's a whole list of names, Alan uh, on sound, and Zach, and Jalen and the Millersville interns on camera, Linda, our receptionist who kept everybody in line, and of course, everyone's commitment who has made this show possible. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next season. So long, everybody. Thanks.